Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part 34 of Tafsir al-Sa'di. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqanakum wa shkuru lillah wa shkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'abudun. O you who believe, eat of the good things that we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah if it is him that you worship. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ He has only forbidden on you dead meat and blood and the flesh of swine. And that on which any name has been invoked other than that of Allah. And that on which any name has been invoked other than that of Allah. But if one of you is forced by necessity, without willful disobedience, nor transgressing due limits, then there is no sin on him, for Allah is oft forgiven. For Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. For Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. This is a command to the believers, in particular, after a command addressed to all humanity. For they are the ones who really benefit from the commands and prohibitions because of their faith. Here Allah enjoined them to eat of the good things that he has provided and to be grateful to Allah for his blessings by only using them in ways that will bring them closer to him. This is the same command that he gave to the messengers when he said, quote, O messengers, eat of that which is wholesome and do righteous deeds. End quote. Surah Al-Mu'minun, Quran chapter 23, verse 51. In this verse, gratitude refers to doing righteous deeds. Here Allah did not say whatever is lawful or halal because Allah has permitted to the believer all good things that he has provided that are free of any negative consequences. That are free of any negative consequences. Moreover, his faith will keep him from consuming anything that is not his. Moreover, his faith will keep him from consuming anything that is not his. In kuntum iyahu ta'budun, if it is he that you worship. That is, then give thanks to him. This indicates that the one who does not give thanks to Allah is not worshipping him alone whilst the one who does give thanks to him is, worship, is, is worshipping him alone. While the one who does give thanks to him is worshipping him alone and has done what he enjoined. It also indicates that eating good things is the means of doing righteous deeds and of them being accepted. The command to give thanks comes immediately after mention of the blessings because gratitude protects existing blessings and brings blessings that are missing whereas ingratitude drives away blessings that are missing and causes existing blessings to be lost when allah azza wa jal mentions the permissibility of good things he also mentions the prohibition on evil or filthy things as he says he has only forbidden you dead meat. This refers to animals that died without being properly slaughtered in accordance with Sharia. Because dead meat is filthy and harmful and is bad in and of itself. Moreover, it is most likely that it died of some disease, in which case it is even more harmful. The lawgiver makes an exception from this general rule with regards to dead locusts and fish which are permissible and good. What them and blood, 
that is blood that has been poured forth. This refers to blood that has drained out of the carcass, as has been explained elsewhere. Surah Al-An'am, Quran chapter 6, 104, verse 145. And that on which any name has been invoked other than that of Allah. That is, that which has been sacrificed to anything other than Allah, such as that which is sacrificed for idols, stones, graves, and so on. This verse does not list everything that is prohibited. Rather, it highlights types of evil things, which are the opposite of the good things. What is haram in general terms is implicit in the verse quoted above, as the opposite of whatever is lawful and good. What is haram in general terms is implicit in the verse quoted above, as the opposite of what is lawful and good. These evil things and others are forbidden to us out of kindness towards us and so as to protect us from harm. However, however, if anyone is forced by necessity, that is, if he is compelled by starvation or want, or he, or he is forced, without willful disobedience, that is, without actively seeking that which is haram, when he is able to obtain that which is halal, or when he is not starving, nor transgressing due limits, that is, without overstepping the mark in consuming that which has been permitted to him out of necessity. So if a person is forced out of necessity and is not able to find any halal food, then he may eat only so much of the, avail of the available haram food as is necessary, and no more than that. فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There is no sin on him. As there is no sin on him, it becomes permissible. In such cases, the individual is commanded to eat. And in fact, it is forbidden to contribute to his own destruction or to kill himself, i.e. by not eating. In that case, it is obligatory for him to eat, and he is sinning if he does not eat, and that results in his death, because then he would have effectively killed himself. This concession and flexibility is part of Allah's mercy towards his slaves. Hence, the verse ends with two names of Allah that are particularly appropriate in this context for Allah is oft forgiving most merciful because this permissibility and concession is connected to these two conditions and the person who finds himself in this situation may not be able to adhere properly to them Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that he is oft forgiving so he will forgive any mistakes made in this situation especially if it is a case of necessity and hardship, which resulted in him not being able to realize when he should stop eating. This verse is also indicative of the well-known principle, quote, necessity makes permissible that which is ordinarily forbidden, end quote. Any haram, any haram thing that a person is compelled to do is permitted to him, by the most merciful to him be praise first and last in the heart and on the lips walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen